This, this is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. Hi, and welcome to the Albuquerque Business Podcast. This is Jason Rigby, your host. Want to do part three of the four disciplines of execution. I hope that you guys went and saw my first and second part. We went over each of the disciplines. We're going to get right into discipline three. This is one that I know is going to help you tremendously. It's going to bring a lot of clarity, especially if you're a leader and you're leading a team. If you're doing coaching, and I hope that you are, if you're daily getting with the people that you have the privilege to lead, I want to encourage you to make opportunities. I, I wrote this in, in my book the other day, that every interruption is an opportunity for me to coach. And I know it's aggravating. I know we're on the computer and we're caught up in reports and we've got this Excel file to update and these 20 emails to answer within an hour. I know interruptions can seem to be horrific, but don't live that life anymore, guys. Allow it to be an opportunity for coaching. Say, hey, I've got three to five minutes. What do you need? And then go through that process of listening to them, valuing them, bring a ton of value to them, coach them through the process. And then they know that they have three to five minutes and they'll leave and then you can get back to your email. It's an amazing thing to do. And I encourage each of you to do that. But today, with this book that I absolutely love and you need to go on Amazon or you can go on eBay and buy it pre-owned. You can get it as low as $3.99 with free shipping on eBay. It is called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Discipline three, like I said, go listen to the other twos for discipline one and discipline two. Don't hop right into this one. Discipline three is keep a compelling scoreboard. The third discipline is to make sure everyone knows the score at all times. How do they know if they're winning or not if there's no scoreboard? How many of you have a scoreboard in your office? And I don't know what that scoreboard may be. It may be appointments. It may be, you know, for your beauty salon. It may be appointments for your dental office. I don't know what the scoreboard for you, how many sales they get in an hour, um, how many, whatever the win is for you. And I've hoped you narrowed it down with the other disciplines we talked about those two. Now we need to make a scoreboard because I'm going to tell you, how effective would you be if there was no scoreboard when you were playing sports? What if you played, and I played basketball in high school, what if you played basketball and they just took the scoreboard down? How motivated would you be if there was no time and there was no scoreboard? How motivating would the game be? No one would even want to watch it in the first place. Those buzzard last minute threes, all of that, that, that there, there would be none of that. You've got to keep a compelling scoreboard. And how many of you in your businesses are you as managers, leaders, do not have a scoreboard anywhere? How do they know if they're winning? That's your responsibility as leader to make sure they understand super clear how to win the game. A compelling scoreboard tells the team where they are and where they should be. I want to say that again. A compelling scoreboard tells the team where they are and where they should be. That's why a great team can't function without a scoreboard that compels action. It causes them to say, I've got two weeks left. I've only made this amount of appointments. I need to step up my game. Maybe I need to come in a little bit early. Maybe I need to stay a little bit late. Maybe I'll eat lunch at my desk, but I know I need to do this, this, and this. That project I was supposed to finish, I'm only at about 40% on it. You know a great way to keep a compelling school board? And and I don't get any, like I said, this book, they haven't given me anything on. This website, they don't give me anything, but it's great. It's visual. It's good. If you want to create a compelling scoreboard and you want to get projects done, you have a lot of projects, use monday.com. Just go there. It's monday.com. It shows a chart. It sends you an email as a leader, but it shows them they're at 30%. They're at 40%. Here's what we knew. You can collaborate. It is a great program. It's a little learning curve in the beginning. Very visual though. And a lot of people like that over like an Excel sheet or Google Sheets or anything like that. Show them how they're winning, guys. 
they truly need to understand the connection between their performance and reaching the goal. You fire people because they lack performance, but do they have a clear score board? Did you make it ultra clear what they need to do? I know on basketball team, you have a small forward, you have a center, you have a point guard. They each have positions and they know exactly what to do. That center is not going to be shooting threes all the time. He's going to dish it off to the guards and let them do that. That's their job. And their performance is based off of that. But how many rebounds is that center supposed to grab? Because when you have a scoreboard, you're going to see, you know what's going to happen? You're going to see the game get elevated. Like I said, play a game without a scoreboard in no time. When you introduce a scoreboard to your team, it's going to elevate them. And you're also going to have the weak players or the ones that are cheating all the time. It's going to reveal them. And then it'll be time to make some changes. Let me give you some characteristics. It's all from the book. Characteristics of a compelling player scoreboard. There are four questions to ask when determining whether a scoreboard is likely to be compelling to the players. Number one, is it simple? We may be tracking all these multiple sets of data, these um, KPIs, these lead and lagging indicators and all that, and we're looking at all this data. I was looking at a bunch of reports today. None of my employees care about that. They care about the report that I'm pulling on them. The team needs to only see the information that is relating to understand their score and what's needed to progress their score further. That's all the information they need to see. Is the scoreboard simple? If they had different scoreboards for different things, how, how simple is it? I mean, I'm using basketball, but you could use you know any analogy, football, whatever, soccer. What, what if they had four different scoreboards in four different parts of the field? You, everybody would be so confused. They wouldn't know what's going on. It's, it's, I like, I, I, I mean, and, and I know this is an amazing sport or whatever, but cricket confuses me. It's like the game goes on for three or four days and there's all different, I get confused. Is it simple? Number two, can I see it easily? Does it visibly drive accountability? Get the biggest whiteboard you can get. You can get an eight foot whiteboard on Amazon for under 200 bucks, guys. That's going to make you so much money. Put the whiteboard up, make it huge, make it visible, put them in front of them. If you've got to get a big easel, get a big, it does not matter. It needs to be in front of them. The most important thing is this scoreboard, guys. It needs to be seen constantly. The results become personally important to that person. And the team sees it constantly. They're going to be able to understand what you want to accomplish. The goal is easily put up on the scoreboard. This is what matters to him or her. This is what I must do. It's that simple. If you do not have a scoreboard, the wig, which we talked about the last other podcast, the wig, the wildly important goal will be forgotten in a few weeks. No matter how motivation you are, no matter how much you love it, the wig will be forgotten in a few weeks. Number three, does it show lead and lag measures? It should show both the lead and lag measures. The lead measure is what the team can affect. The lag measure is the results they want. The team needs to see both. So if if you have a sales department and you're just showing lag measures, what they sold last month and what they have sold, not looking at lead measures like in the sense of how many people, how many meaningful conversations have they had with the person? Um, how many appointments have they set? How many um, networking events have they gone to? What have they done You know, in the CRM? How much time are they spending in their CRM? Are they putting full notes with each prospect that they're putting in there? How many prospects are they putting in there? You know, Those are all lead measures. The lead measure is what the team can affect. The lag measure is the result they want. The team needs to see both, guys. Make sure your scoreboard displays both. And then finally, the last question is, can I tell at a glance if I'm winning? It has to tell you immediately if you are winning or losing. If the team can't quickly determine if they are winning or losing by looking at the scoreboard, then it's not a game, it's just data. (laughs) Oh, I love this book. It's not a game, it's just data. And there is a small percentage of the population that gets off on data. Most people find it extremely boring, but you put an interesting scoreboard up and you make it visual. You can get, if you know somebody, let me give you another tip here. 
You can get that big eight foot, 96 inch uh, whiteboard on Amazon. If you know somebody that can is very crafty and very detail oriented, put them in charge. Buy some black pinstriping, automotive pinstriping. You can get it very small at like a quarter inch or whatever, or smaller, eight inch, 16 inch, whatever you want. And you can put that on. You clean the whiteboard really good with the alcohol. And then you take this tape. As long as somebody's really detailed and they can do a straight line, you can make graphs with it. You can make little squares. Whatever you want to do, you can make it to keep track of things. And that will stay there permanently no matter how much you wipe um, the board off. Every month or every week, however you want to do the tracking. They have to know whether they're able to know if they're winning or losing within the first five seconds of looking at the board. And they need to know what their teammates are doing. You may not like that idea. I know in this new culture now, we want to give participation trophies to everybody, but it doesn't work in life that way. Life isn't fair. If you're doing bad and you're being lazy and you're not doing what you're supposed to, and Bill is over there kicking ass, doing exactly what he's supposed to, getting there early, staying late, working smart, and he's winning. He's a winner. The other person's a loser. It's just that simple. They have to be able to look at the scoreboard and know if they're winning or losing within five seconds. So if you make it over complicated, guys, you've got to understand it needs to make it as simple as possible. So the four disciplines in team engagement in part of this. It is a deep belief that engagement drives results, and this is particularly true when the team can see the direct impact their actions have on the results. Nothing affects morale and engagement more powerfully when a person feels he or she is winning. Morale goes up when people feel that they're winning. In many cases, winning is a more powerful driver of engagement than money, benefits, package, working conditions, whether you have a best friend at work or even whether you like your boss, winning is everything, guys. Let me tell you something. You don't have a lot of money for your organization or business. You're a small business. You've got four or five employees and you guys are working, whatever it may be. Or maybe you're a large business. I'm telling you, you can go online. There is inexpensive places to get trophies, very inexpensive places. You can get nice big trophies that used to cost you $100. You can get them for $10 now, engraved. No kidding. What I encourage you to do, you can go to these trophy places and they'll have like over $100, you know, shipping. Buy a trophy of the month for every month for whatever you want to do. Best customer service, you know, best product specialist, uh, you know, take care of more Google, re- most Google reviews and get trophies. They're 10 bucks. What's that worth? You, you can get big ones. They look really nice and they have like, you can customize them and all kinds of stuff. Buy 12 of them. Spend the $100, you've got 12 trophies, and make it a big deal. It would cost you a little bit over $100 to get 12 trophies, and what's that going to impact for the year? And let them put that in their office, um, post it when they get the reward, post it, make a video, take a picture of them holding it, make it a big deal. That's what they love. They love to win. Studies have shown that over and over again. People want to win at work. That's what they were there for. We want to get wins. Why do we play games? Why do we do sports? Why do we watch games? Why do we watch sports? Why why do we watch sports over and over and over again and then turn around and watch another sport and then turn around and watch Sports Center and then turn around and on the weekends go play sports? We want that feeling of winning. And I think what I want you guys to understand more than anything is that when you create a compelling scoreboard, you're creating competition. And that's not a bad thing. Competition is a good thing. It causes them peer-to-peer to judge each other in a good way. And it says, as a team, I'm letting the team down. I cannot let the team down. I know in the military, when I was in the Marine Corps, you, you can get somebody killed for doing that. You have to take ownership of not just yourself and have personal discipline in what you need to do and what you need to accomplish, but you need to look out after the team and be selfless. And I'm telling you guys, that needs to be displayed in the workplace. Too many people have this new culture of feeling like, you know, I'm more worried about my feelings than I am about production and the work that I need to do. And I know we need to create a great culture. And I've talked to you guys about that a ton of times, be serving leadership and doing all that. But at the end of the day, we can't just have people hanging out, talking with no accountability and doing nothing. 
They can't be showing up late, calling in sick all the time, going for two-hour lunches, leaving early, taking multiple breaks, and you have employees that are taking advantage of you that way. You need to make a decision right now that you're going to hold people accountable with the scoreboard. And you don't have to be the mean one and nag all the time. You let the scoreboard do it. You put it out there. They're going to see. And the other peers around there are going to see and see how that's affecting the team. Make individual goal and make a team goal. And then let somebody let that team down and see what happens. Like We would have got this if this person wouldn't have done this. I guarantee you they're either going to straighten up or you're going to see the team handle the situation properly, which I love. So I encourage you as leaders, Follow discipline three, guys. Get where you're measuring these lead and lag measures. It's going to wake you up too. When you start measuring leads and seeing where you're at exactly and seeing what that person's doing or not doing, it, it's going to it's gonna wake you up to the point that you're going to say, I need to look at this stuff every day. And I can prevent somebody from derailing if I know that they need to go in this direction or this direction. May, maybe they need to be encouraged. Maybe they're discouraged and they need to be encouraged and you need to sit them down and do some coaching with them and tell them what an amazing employee they are. And that you know they've had a you know a few rough months or a few rough weeks, but that you believe in them. And yet you know and you've seen them before be their best. And what is a and then ask them in coaching, ask them what does the best self version of them look like at that job? Like if they were coming every day to their work. What would their best self look like? And let them, and be quiet, shut up, and let them talk. And let them tell you. And they're going to get those emotions, and they're going to get the feelings, and they know that they're not there. And they're going to perform for you the way that they should. I want to thank you guys. Discipline three. We're going to do discipline four, and probably, I may even do like a six-part series on this. That's how much I love the book. Go to Amazon, go to eBay. It's called The Four Disciplines of Execution. It's amazing. You need to read it. You can go to the audio book, whatever you want. Um, It's really going to change your life. It's going to change how you lead, and it'll change your organization. If you guys have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe. Go up there. Push the little button. Subscribe. That would help me. It helps local business here in Albuquerque. I want to thank our sponsors. Uh, We have Tartle.co. If you want to get paid for your data, you can sign up right now for free at Tartle.co. And as you go to Facebook and Instagram and all that, they will turn around and pay you in Bitcoin for just hanging out and doing what you normally do. So you might as well get paid for it. I want to thank Quality Mazda. If you're looking for a new vehicle and you want to have an opposite experience from what you normally get at a dealership, I encourage you to go to Quality Mazda. You can go to qualitymazdanm.com. There's some amazing cars. Mazda's shot off into a luxury brand. So if, and it's inexpensive. I mean, I'm amazed. Like their SUV, the CX-5, I'm driving one right now, a 2020 CX-5. That thing is... It looks like a Lexus or an Infinity. It's it's amazing. And it's about 20 grand cheaper. So if you haven't looked at Mazdas, I encourage you to do that. It's Quality Mazda on Lomas Boulevard. Want to thank 99.9 The Beat FM. They have been there from the beginning with this podcast. They're a minority-owned hip-hop radio station here in Albuquerque that supports local. Um, I encourage you as a business owner to listen to them. You can go to 99.9 The Beat FM and stream it in your work. Everybody loves old school hip hop. It's not going to be anything bad. It's super clean. Um, You're going to get 80s and 90s R&B. It's amazing. You're going to see everybody singing along to it. Um, Support local. Go to 99.9 The Beat FM. And then I want to thank ABQ Live Magazine. They are the leading magazine for here in Albuquerque for what's new, what's going on. If you want to know about happy hour specials. They have all the bars, all the places in town. If you want to know what new restaurant is opening up or where you should eat, I encourage you to, you can go any, you can do this about anywhere, any brewery, and you'll see that the ABQ Live magazine. Uh, It's a great uh, place. If you would like to, um, I encourage you to DM me if you want to get in that magazine. They also have some digital packages that can help you, which would be amazing. You can go on an email blast. They have, you know, over 50,000 email addresses. If you if that's something you want to do, DM me and I'll get you in touch uh, with them and, and I can give you a special discount uh, through them. If you want to purchase a Mazda, let me know. I can get you a special discount, special pricing on that. We want to encourage local business here in Albuquerque, guys. That's what we're about. We want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing, downloading, and sharing this podcast. And I encourage if you know a business owner that needs help or you want 
to me to talk about a specific uh, topic in coaching or whatever it may be, let me know. You guys tell me all the time, and then I just direct the podcast to that. Well, you guys, so DM me. You can go to ABQ Jason Rigby on Twitter. I'm on Twitter all the time. I'm on Instagram, ABQ Jason Rigby. And um, you can direct message me, whatever it may be, and I'd be more than happy to help you guys in any way possible. Thanks and have an amazing week. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share. And go to ABQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.